In the fundamentals course, we introduce the concept of an event. Here's a quick refresher. Very simply, events are methods that listen or monitor for a change in your cloud application and are responsible for starting flows. In this lesson, we'll dive deeper into events to learn about their different types and how they affect building flows. Every flow begins with an event that's represented by an event card. This is a special kind of card that allows you to select how your flow begins. Events may range from simply scheduling your flow to execute at a given time, to launching your flows based on specific activities in other applications. You have a number of event types at your disposal. Let's go over each type. Application events create flows that run automatically based on an application event. These are the most common events that you will use. API call events run whenever an HTTP request is made to their URL. This URL is generated automatically by Okta workflows. We'll discuss how API endpoint cards work in depth in advanced lessons later on. Child flows are very powerful and useful tools that we'll also cover in greater depth in later lessons. For now, just remember that they are useful tools that can help you modularize your workflow setups so you won't have to repeatedly create the same types of flows with small variations. Instead, you'll be able to call upon child flows to handle repetitive actions and create simpler parent flows to supply any connected child flows with the data they need to perform their tasks. For this lesson, we'll focus on application-based events as they are the most common. Application-based events trigger when a specific action is performed in one of your connected cloud-based applications. You'll use these events to frequently automate tedious manual processes. You may even want to kick off the same process using any number of different events, such as receiving a new email, acquiring a new customer, updating a record in a spreadsheet, or closing a deal. While each kind of event may behave similarly, application-based events can have subtle differences that you should be aware of when building your flows. These differences are due to the different ways an event can trigger. Polling events are typically the most common event type. They are like a scheduled flow, but attached to a specific event. These events pull the connected cloud-based application for new data and trigger if that data meets your specified criteria. This isn't a real-time event, and so it will only attempt to run as frequently as you specify. Polling events will always include the schedule feature, indicated by the clock icon on the bottom right of the event. You may also see events labeled as webhook or real-time in the Okta workflows interface because they trigger in real-time. To follow common best practices, we prefer to use the term webhook. These events are initiated by services that support webhook frameworks that are capable of alerting Okta workflows as soon as your event trigger occurs. Smartsheet is one platform that offers webhook functionality, so let's break down how that works with an example. First, Workflows creates a link to call when a webhook event is created. With that link established, Smartsheet will make a call using this link and tell your flow to begin whenever you update a row. Of course, updating a row is just one example that can trigger an event. You'll find many other examples of webhooks in Okta workflows in the applications that support them. But it's important to remember that while some applications support webhooks, some don't. Some apps may offer support for webhooks but restrict usage to premium or administrator accounts. While responses typically happen in real time, you shouldn't necessarily expect an immediate response. It can take some time for data to make it from one server to another and for your workflow to run. However, in many cases, you'll see results within seconds of a triggered webhook event. API endpoints and child flows are more advanced topics that we'll discuss further in a later lesson. But before we wrap up, let's discuss some general concepts you should know about API endpoint events. API endpoint events work like the webhook events we discussed earlier, but they require a manual setup. You will want to use API endpoint events in a situation with the following criteria. 1. The cloud application you want to integrate does not have a pre-existing connector available in the workflows console. 2. The same cloud application has support to call webhooks or API endpoints when certain events occur. In some cases, this feature will be offered but limited to premium accounts. Make sure your account has this feature if you want to use it with API endpoint events in Okta workflows. 3. You have a means of triggering the event in the cloud application so you can test your workflow with real data from your account. Setting up an API endpoint event will differ depending on the cloud application you use and so will triggering events. For example, when a message is received in Discord, code is committed to a GitHub repository or a form you created in Insta page receives a submission. Webhook calls can be assigned to trigger the API endpoint events URL to start the workflow. 
Alternatively, when using Twilio, an API endpoint event may be called upon receipt of an SMS text message or a new call recording. These examples demonstrate that API endpoint events can begin through an action that triggers directly in the cloud application's main user interface, like Discord and GitHub, through shared content produced by that cloud application, like Instapage, or through external sources, like Twilio.